my lords and ladies, dear patrons, I am Lord Blooddraw, and you have come home to the Cathode Zone, where each week we will explore the shadowy depths of old-time TV. <laughs> In 1966, producer William Dozier had a massive hit with the iconic TV series Batman. It quickly became a cultural phenomenon, so, naturally, trying to capture that same lightning in a bottle again, he began producing pilots for similar properties. Dozier produced the Green Hornet TV series, which ran one season, and three pilots for series that none of the networks picked up. A Batgirl series pilot, a weirdly over-the-top comedy version of Wonder Woman, and the pilot we're about to see tonight. <laughs> From the dim, distant year of 1967, it's the pilot based on the classic comic strip character, Dick Tracy. Tonight to meet you. It's just uh, an hour away. My government is very concerned. There's no cause for concern. I assure you the meeting will not take place. Good. For if you should fail... Mac up! The word fail is not in my lexicon. At this very moment, my plan is being put into operation. And I assure you, it will be successful. Morning, Mr. Ambassador. No grazie, signora. Oh, just a small bunch, sir. <laughs> We're being watched. Six inches above the water when feeding the piranha. If only you had. Our little friends display the highest dedication to an ideal. To destroy quickly without guile or subterfuge the sincerest form of honesty. That just came in from Devon, sir. Excellent. But now I need more information. First, by mental telepathy, I shall transmit to the computer a list of all political crimes within the past ten years. 
All from memory, sir? Of course. Then I shall feed in a compilation of all crime hunters involved. My machines will then determine the probable agencies and detectives will be assigned to the case. Start the tapes, please. Yes, sir. Kidnapping of three ambassadors would bring an enormous ransom. That's correct, Chief Patton. But there's a far deeper implication. They were leaving for a secret and vital NATO conference. The very life of our most vital defense organization is at stake. I understand. We think the ambassadors may have been brought to this city. Then you have a clue. A slim one. An ambulance was found abandoned a few miles out of the city. Analysis of the tires and dirt scraped from under the car show a composition of soil and red clay indigenous to this area. Mr. Higgins. That's not much of a lead, I'm afraid. It's all we have. But if the ambassadors are here, you'll find them. I'll get our top man on the job, Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy! Of course. He was responsible for the elimination of the brow, flat top, mumbles. Married to Tess Trueheart, has two children, Bonnie Braids and Junior, who's adopted. There's a 394 Orchard Drive, telephone number 5557268. Well, Mr. Dick Tracy should prove to be a formidable opponent. Dick and Junior. Just a note to say they will arrive tomorrow on Flight 618. That'll be great. Bonnie Braids and I have had a marvelous time with Sis, but can't wait to get home. Love, Tess. See, I want you to see something. Sit down. Now, watch. Watch the bear. Gosh! That's really something. I've never seen anything like this before. I'm sure you haven't. It's a scientific first for the department. The infrared rays. Tracy here. Where are you? In my lab. Well, get over here right away. Something big is breaking. On the double, Chief. Let's go, Junior. Chief, we've discovered only three agencies in the city that sell ambulances. Liz, you and Sam each take one. I'll check the third. Right. Check. You all know the make and model? Right. Good. Oh, Tracy. Yeah. Remember, those three ambassadors are probably somewhere in this city. If we don't rescue them soon, our entire Western European defense system is useless. We'll do everything humanly possible, Chief. Good luck. Yes, sir. Have the ambassadors arrived? Yes, sir. They're being held in the basement. Good. Big 
found my ambulance in Washington. Huh? Yes, it was traced to this area, and the sales agency for the Grand Ambulances led me to you. Well, I certainly want to thank you and the authorities in Washington for finding it. As to who stole it or why, I, I have no idea. Why didn't you report the theft to the police? Well, frankly, as you must know, I've had a few brushes with your department. Uh, unsubstantiated charges, but nevertheless annoying. And since the car was insured... Nothing you can tell me, then? No, nothing. Uh, was the stolen ambulance involved in a crime? Just a regulation checkup. Thank you, Doctor. Well, my pleasure. Uh, believe me, I'm happy to cooperate with the police. It uh, <laughs> might give me a better image. I'll tell them you were helpful. Tracy just left. I, I need your help. Well, I did a stupid thing. He, he dropped his cigarette case and I picked it up. Well, he's got my fingerprints. Well, he can connect me with the Washington trip. Oh. Oh, you'll have Ben get me out of town. Well, well, just a minute. He, he, he's right here. He wants to talk to you. This is Ben, Mr. Memory. Yes, sir. I'll do it right away. Chief, I'm positive that Dr. Alexander knows more than he told me, but I can't prove it. Maybe his fingerprints will tell us something. Patton here. Thank you. Alexander's body was found on Highway 18. They were definitely thrown out of the car. They figured he had to be silenced. Yes, we were getting too close. Telegram for you, Dick. Have reserved room for you at Seawolf Hotel, Deer Park Road. Be there 9 o'clock tonight. We'll contact you there. Come alone and unarmed. Any tricks and all three gentlemen will depart permanently. Mr. Memory. Mr. Memory? Ring any bells? I never heard of him. Neither have I. I'll send a detail to surround the place. All right, give me an hour in the hotel. If I haven't contacted you by then, come a running. We'll be staked out within five minutes at the place. Sounds like woman's intuition, but I have the feeling he needs us. Crazy ass for an hour, Liz. We'll give him a few minutes more, then we'll move in.
Mr. Tracy's most ingenious is going to blow the door open. Go in there and bring him out. Hurry! Take every room in the place. He might have an accomplice. He's dead. Fell on his hook. You know him? No. I'll call them all. Before, before you do that, go through his clothing. If we find something, I can check it out in my lab at home. Right. I knew we should have moved in sooner. I did cut it pretty fine. I'm okay now, though. Thanks. What's in the bottle, Tracy? Optimexophene. Never heard of it. What is it? It's an amazing new discovery by a Swiss scientist. A drop in each eye or in just one eye, magnifies an object five times more than a microscope. These scraps were taken from the dead man's cuffs. Computer tape. Pine from the outer structure. Philippine pine. Pretty rare tree for this locality. I'll check the landscape architects in the area. Maybe we can trace the buyer. Sam, you better check the nurseries, too. Right, Chief. Tracy, you get some rest. You've had a hard night. Well, this stuff will wear off in about an hour. It's just as well. You all look like freaks to me. Yeah, well, same to you, fella. Anyway, there are a lot of familiar faces in this episode. Our villain, Mr. Memory, is played by the great character actor, Victor Bono, who also famously played the Batman villain, King Tut. Tracy's assistant, Liz, is portrayed by Jan Shutan, who Star Trek fans will recognize as Lieutenant Mira Romaine in the episode, The Lights of Zatar, and, oddly enough, appearing only in the credits and nowhere in the episode, is a very young Eve Plum, Jan Brady herself, as Bonnie Braves. <laughs> well, let's get on to part two of Dick Tracy to see if and how he thwarts the evil Mr. Memory, and also to see if those weird eye drops wore off. There it is. You did a good job, Liz. This was the only place in miles that had imported Philippine pine. Major Power has agreed to pay millions for the complete disruption of NATO. I have made this possible. In 24 hours, I will consummate my greatest victory. Uh, Mrs. Flowers, you will deliver this envelope personally. It will be forwarded to the interested parties. Blanton is waiting in the car to take you. Look at me. You understand? Yes, Mr. Also Lemon. have Blanton pick up some more computer tape. Yes, sir. Hold everything. Someone's coming out. Good morning, Blanton. We're going into town. Yes, ma'am. All right, let's get that car.
gentlemen, I want to apologize for the inconveniences you have suffered, but I assure you, your visit here will be over very soon. It may just be a matter of hours. Here's the wig and the tapes you wanted, Tracy. Oh, and by the way, that fellow with the hook is on the wanted list. He's an escapee from a psychopathic ward. This thing is beginning to figure. That old place must be a booby hatch. Now, those two must have really sung. A whole opera, Chief. How he uses his computers, his electronic uh, telepathy, his headset, everything. We even know the foreign power involved. How do I look? Gorgeous. Tracy, I doubt if she can get away with it. Chief, it's the only way to get into the house without arousing suspicion. I know, but it's after you get in that I'm worried about. If we run into real trouble, I'm counting on those tapes. All right, I told you this was your case. I'm letting you call the shots. But we'll still be here if you need us. Come on, Lisa. Good luck. <laughs> so you'll be dead. You understand? Put that down. You can cover, Liz. And you take the money to Chief Patton. Sure, but what are you up to? I have one more job to do. Mr. Memory. That's right. Dick, wait for some help. He's too dangerous. He might be gone by then. Take the out to the Chief, Liz. That's Look. an order. <laughs> Sir? You bring the tape. I'm putting them now, sir. Good. I'll be using them as soon as you're through. I thought I heard the car drive away. I put it in the garage, sir. They're gone! What? They disappeared! Down! We have a revolver! Any of that move and they'll kill you! I'd regret that! 
But if you are who I think you are, I hope to find a far more excruciating death for you. Well, Mr. Tracy, we meet at last. My congratulations, you were a formidable adversary. And I wonder indeed who is the victor. You have cost me millions, and I will have cost you your life. I promise you, if I die, you die too. There's a squad of policemen outside. But you're of value, and the police are notoriously sentimental where a comrade is concerned. I don't believe they'll trade your life for mine. Don't count on it. Mr. Tracy, I must repay a debt to an old friend. Now, to find which death would be most suitable. Very fitting. A superb ironic touch. You will walk very slowly to the aquarium. My friend Hook lost one of his hands by accident. You're going to lose both of yours by design. Take off his gloves. Now. Kill me! I'll kill Tracy. I assure you, at this range, I cannot miss. Drop your weapon. Do as he says. We have no choice. Charlie. Victor. You're about to witness a very interesting sight. Mr. Tracy is going to feed his hands to my piranha. Come on. Tracy's ultrasonic tapes did the job. Mr. Memory has been committed to a mental institution. Recommitted. He was insane too? Paranoid. He was suffering from the gigantic delusion that he was in contact with the computers, but actually there wasn't a mark on the tapes. That gadget he sat under was a radio transmitter, and the electrodes in his skull were miniature radio receiving sets. No wonder he collapsed when you turned on the full volume. Yeah, our ears are still ringing from the sound. That's the truth. Well, folks, got to be on my way. I'm meeting Tess and Bonnie Brace at the airport. Oh, Tracy, you've earned a week's vacation. He didn't hear you, Chief. What did I tell you? The ears, the ears. Chief, I'll take you up on that week's vacation. But in August, the city will be sweltering then. To destroy a metropolis, Dick Tracy encounters global enemy number one. But sadly, next week never came. You know, unlike the other unsold pilot we've seen here in the cathode zone, the pilot for Mr. Terrific, I'm disappointed this pilot didn't go to series. 
I really would have watched this show. Now, for one thing, it's rumored that the great Lon Chaney Jr. was signed to play the classic Dick Tracy villain Prune Face in an episode. And if the series had gone to air, maybe there might have been a Dick Tracy Batman crossover story, similar to the Green Hornet Batman two-parter. It would have been really fun. <laughs> well, anyway, my lords and ladies, I hope you'll join me again next week, dear patrons, as we tour the dark depths of what TV used to be. Ha <laughs> ha! As always, I am Lord Bloodraw saying, uh, you're always at home in the cathode zone.